dog play is comprised of ritualized aggression, and aggression is rooted in fear. In ritualized aggression, there are varying degrees of fear, stress, and aversions along the spectrum from slight stress to possibly full-blown stress and fear that results in a fight or a bite or an attempt to flee. The fun, enjoyable parts of the dog play stress spectrum are positively reinforced and intrinsically so by their very nature. These are behaviors that are reciprocated and or result in play being accepted by the other dogs. Play bows, shoulder rolls, invitations to be chased, barking, reciprocal mouthing, and mutual give and take such as pinning and physical exchanges are all signs dogs are enjoying the play. The aversions of teeth, body checks, being pinned too much, being chased too much are on the negative reinforcement side of the equations. We see that play behavior straddle both sides of the spectrum, as dogs are typically working in microseconds to avoid these slight stresses by way of movements issued to avoid aversions. Prediction error is the process of stimuli and events and the differences between received and perceived and predicted rewards. This is crucial for evolutionary benefits of social interactions. Rewards are a big part of learning. Dogs are always assessing predictive value. This is something widely known. And prediction error is involved in both associative and operant learning. It works like this. There is a distinguishing between a prediction about a future reward or no prediction, which is just a poorly defined one. Then there will be a comparison of the reward and the prediction. When the reward is either better than or equal to or worse than what is predicted, the future behavior will change based on the differences between the reinforcements and the predictions. Let's add some context. If the reward is different from the prediction, a prediction error exists and the brain updates the prediction and the behavior changes accordingly. Example, dog predicts a play bow from another dog but instead is tackled and pinned. Next sequence, the dog sets up for a tackle and pin by adjusting their play sequence in some way towards the other dog. If the reward is better than positive prediction error, which all creatures want, the prediction becomes better and the behavior to reach those rewards reinforcements will increase. Example, dog predicts a body check from a larger dog, but instead the larger dog self handicaps and rolls onto their shoulder. The smaller dog reciprocates with self handicapping. If the reward is worse than the prediction, negative prediction error, which no creature wants, the prediction becomes worse and the behavior that maps towards avoidance will increase. Example, dog receives hard bite and play. Not a damaging bite, but it hurts. Next engagement with the other dog, that other dog will adjust behavior to avoid being bitten or mouthed, or they're going to bite back with force. Whether the prediction is better or worse, or new and unexpected, learning is taking place. Much of learning is accomplished by making mistakes. Although mistakes are something all creatures are striving to avoid, they will occur and actually help in the learning process about how to obtain more rewarding and reinforcing behavior. The goal of dog play shaping and refereeing by humans is to minimize the mistakes and the stress by way of proactive training with disengagements. Humans can change predictions and associations for dogs during dog play. If there are no further mistakes, the behavior will not change until the next error. Proper human refereeing of dog play will allow for quicker recovery and bounce back from stressful events in dog play. This allows for a more even flow of dopamine to rise and fall without dramatic increases or decreases. Thus, the predictions about play will be more accurate and simultaneously new behaviors are shaped and learned. This applies to both learning about obtaining rewards and reinforcements and learning new movements and sequences to avoid stress and negative outcomes. The toggle of positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement, ritualized aggression. The antecedent of negative reinforcement sequences is an aversive. The behavior that follows is something to avoid or combat that aversive. The dog is looking to avoid or decrease the aversion that is occurring. In the case of dog play, it's built on aversive avoidances and reinforcing reciprocal physicalities that toggle back and forth. 
There are microaversions involving teeth, chasing, pinning, body checking, and vocalizing. All of this plays into the dogs reading each other's play signals. Stress can build up during play when humans do not proactively referee the play, and the stress can cause dogs to tip over into a fight, or they will shut down and tap out. And those deference signals that show humans a dog is done with play will help us to reduce stress and avoid negative associations if we are proactively involved and paying attention to stress signals as well as reciprocal signals. It is often not the first tooth that lands too hard on the other dog, but the 20th time, and thus the negative reinforcement was not achieved by way of some avoidance movement. And now the dogs have stress past the point that is acceptable. Helping reduce stress during dog play by way of tactile and verbal disengagements creates negative reinforcement sequences by way of disengagements before too much stress builds up. Humans are thinking for the dogs and implementing breaks in play before it is needed. This is the number one way to avoid dog fights in play. This is crucial for puppies and dogs that are just learning about their play styles with new dog friends. Dogs should not be allowed to fully figure it out they need guidance and structure so they have the most rewarding experiences during dog play. Dogs are making prediction errors on both sides of the equations for both potential reinforcement and potential avoidance. Dogs move 7 to 10 times faster than humans. However, humans think faster with more clarity and accuracy than dogs do, especially when there is a hectic environment to contend with. Humans process data exponentially faster than dogs. When humans implement the negative reinforcements, avoidance sequences earlier, before there's an inordinate amount of stress, the humans shape the sequences for better prediction error and prediction value. Thus, the dogs learn faster that they are safe. Prediction error is crucial in learning, and what is most prescient is the dogs having predictions be better than expected. When humans are focused, properly educated, humane, and proactively seeking to reduce stress during dog play, the chances of a dog fight breaking out during dog play are incredibly low, as in the 1% category. After all, that is the macro goal of all dog play groups or duos, no fights or concerning bites. By taking a proactive role in refereeing dog play and shaping behavior, humans are creating better prediction error that maps to a safer dog play environment with less stress and more success.